Pluto is one of the most enigmatic members of our solar system. Its icy surface and distant orbit have captured the imagination of astronomers and space enthusiasts for decades. Yet, even with all the information we've gathered, there's always more to uncover. Every time, I try to delve into its mysteries. But no matter how much I explain, there's always something left unsaid. Inevitably, I find myself greeted by thoughtful comments and intriguing questions. Why is Pluto, though difficult to see from Earth when the Hubble Space Telescope can capture galaxies millions of light years away? How could New Horizons capture such bright and detailed images of Pluto, even though it resides in the distant darkness of the Cooper Belt? I love these questions because they allow us to explore the universe's wonders in fascinating detail. Today, I'll take you on a journey to uncover answers to four of the most intriguing questions about Pluto. These answers will not only explain the science behind this dwarf planet, but also reveal some captivating truths about how our universe works. So, let's dive in. To start with, many people wonder, how is it that Hubble can see distant galaxies with such clarity, but struggles to capture detailed images of Pluto, a celestial body much closer to us? It seems counterintuitive, doesn't it? The answer lies in something called angular diameter. Let me explain. When we look at distant galaxies like Andromeda, which is around a million light years away, we might expect it to appear tiny. But here's the astonishing fact. Andromeda is massive about 220,000 light years across. Its sheer size compensates for its distance, giving it a large apparent size in our sky. If you had a camera with high exposure, you'd see that Andromeda stretches six times wider than the full moon in our sky. In fact, it's so large that when Hubble imaged it, the telescope couldn't capture it in one shot. The stunning picture we often see is actually a mosaic of over 100 Hubble exposures stitched together. Most galaxies aren't as close or as large as Andromeda, but many are still big enough for Hubble to resolve with fascinating detail. Take the Pinhu galaxy, for instance. It's a stunning spiral galaxy located 21 million light years away, yet it appears nearly as large as the moon in the night sky. This gives us some perspective. Even though galaxies are far away, their immense size makes them easier to image than small. Nearby objects like Pluto. Pluto, in comparison, is minuscule. At its closest approach to Earth, its angular diameter is just 0.11 arcseconds. To give you a sense of scale, there are 60 arc minutes in a degree and 60 arcseconds in an arc minute. Andromeda spans about 3 degrees across the sky, while Pluto barely registers. It's so tiny that resolving any detail on it is an incredible feat for a telescope like Hubble. This is why the New Horizons mission, which flew past Pluto in 2015, was such a groundbreaking moment. Before New Horizons, we had only blurry, pixelated images of Pluto. Every image the spacecraft sent back was like unveiling a new world for the first time. To help visualize this concept, imagine standing in a field and looking at a tiny flower up close. Now, look at a towering building far away. The building might appear clearer to your eyes than the small, blurry flower in front of you. The flower represents Pluto small and difficult to resolve while the building represents the distant galaxies Hubble observes with ease. This brings us to another fascinating question about Pluto. Why does it and its largest moon, Karen, orbit around a point in empty space? This peculiar phenomenon has puzzled many people. Some even wonder if there's an invisible, massive object, perhaps a tiny black hole at the center of their orbit. But the truth is far less exotic and much more grounded in physics. To understand this, we need to talk about bare centers, which are the centers of mass between two orbiting objects. In most cases, the bare center lies within the larger body. For example, Earth and the Moon both orbit a bare center. But because Earth is much more massive, the bare center is located inside our planet. This gives the impression that the Moon simply orbits Earth. In the case of Pluto and Charon, however, the two bodies are much closer in mass. Charon is about half the size of Pluto, making their gravitational pull on each other nearly equal. As a result, their bare center is inside Pluto, but rather in the empty space between them. 
This creates the illusion that they're both orbiting an invisible point in space. It's a unique dance, one that only Pluto and Cairn share among the major celestial bodies in our solar system. The only other notable example is the Sun and Jupiter, where the bare center lies just outside the Sun's surface to, to Jupiter's massive size. Now, let's address a question that often surprises people. How do the New Horizons images of Pluto appear so bright, given how far the dwarf planet is from the Sun? After all, at an average distance of 40 times farther from the Sun than Earth, shouldn't Pluto exist in perpetual darkness? It's true that Pluto receives only about 1. 1,600th of the sunlight Earth does, but even this faint sunlight is enough to illuminate the dwarf planet surprisingly well. To give you a real-world comparison, the brightness on Pluto's surface at high noon is similar to the dim light you'd find in a corridor or stairway on Earth. NASA even coined the term Pluto time to describe the moments at dawn and dusk when Earth's illumination matches Pluto's daylight. If you've ever stepped outside during Pluto time, you'd notice that it's dim, but not pitch black. Of course, New Horizons used advanced imaging techniques to capture such vivid photos. Long exposure times and post-processing enhancements allowed the spacecraft to reveal Pluto's stunning details, from its icy plains to its towering mountains. Finally, we arrive at the most controversial and emotive question of all, why is Pluto no longer considered a planet? For decades, Pluto was celebrated as the ninth planet in our solar system. But in 2006, the International Astronomical Union redefined the term planet, and Pluto didn't make the cut. This decision sparked widespread debate and even outrage, with many feeling that Pluto had been unfairly demoted. To understand why this happened, we need to revisit the history of planetary classification. For centuries, the list of planets in our solar system was constantly evolving. In the 1800s, astronomers discovered several large objects in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, including Ceres, Pallas, and Vesta. Initially, these objects were classified as planets, but as more and more asteroids were discovered, it became clear that they were a distinct category of celestial bodies. Similarly, the discovery of the Cooper Belt in the 1990s revealed that Pluto was just one of many icy objects in this distant region of the solar system. In 2006, the IAU established three criteria for defining a planet. It must orbit the Sun, be spherical in shape due to its own gravity, and have cleared its orbital neighborhood of other debris. While Pluto meets the first two criteria, it fails the third because it resides in the Cooper Belt, a region filled with other icy bodies. As a result, Pluto was reclassified as a dwarf planet. This reclassification doesn't diminish Pluto's significance. If anything, it highlights its unique role as a gateway to understanding the Cooper Belt and the outer reaches of our solar system, and as science continues to evolve. So, to does our understanding of the cosmos. So there you have it for questions about Pluto answered. From its tiny angular size to its shared orbit with Charon, its surprising brightness, and its controversial status as a dwarf planet, Pluto remains one of the most fascinating objects in our solar system. Its story is a testament to the ever-changing nature of science and our endless curiosity about the universe. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the mysteries of Pluto.